Hello everyone. This is the second part of the circle of beliefs. Now here we will discuss about the second component of it which is internal carotid artery. It is derived from common carotid artery. So common carotid artery divides into two branches internal carotid artery and external carotid artery at C3 to C4 level cervical vertebrae. Okay. Now let us discuss about the branches of internal carotid artery. So part 1 of internal carotid artery is known as cervical part. Part 1 cervical part which has no branches whereas part 2 is petrous part second part of internal carotid artery is petrous part see this part this part is petrous part of internal carotid artery this is cervical part of internal carotid artery so it enters into the cranial cavity through carotid canal this is carotid canal it enters into cranial cavity through carotid canal and it traverses the superior aspect of the foramen lacerum see it enters into the carotid canal and it traverses through superior aspect of the foramen lacerum and enters into cavernous sinus this is foramen lacerum okay now let us discuss about the branches of the petrous part of the internal carotid artery there are it gives rise to two branch, branches that is carotico tympanic artery and artery of pergoid canal so petrous part of the internal carotid artery gives rise to carotico tympanic artery and artery of pergoid canal Carotico tympanic branches and artery of carotid uh, artery of pterygoid can branch. This is these are two. Now let us discuss about the part three of the internal carotid artery that is cavernous part. So after entering through the foramen lacerum, it enters into the cavernous sinus. So it, it is a comp main component of the component of cavernous sinus. So this is important. So it passes through cavernous sinus and gives rise to different branches there, like marginal tentorial branch, inferior hypophyseal branch which supplies the pituitary gland, trigeminal ganglion branch which supplies the trigeminal ganglion, neural branch and cavernous sinus branch. It also has meningeal branch. Okay. So main, what are the main points in this? It passes through the cavernous sinus. So it is known as cavernous part. It uh, enters through foramen lacerum and enters into the uh, cavernous sinus. Okay. This is part 3 of the internal carotid artery about the fourth part that is intracerebral part so what are the branches of it of the fourth part anterior cerebral artery middle cerebral artery posterior communicating artery this is ophthalmic artery see here we can see this is ophthalmic artery anterior cerebral artery middle cerebral artery posterior communicating artery and there is one more branch known as anterior choroidal artery okay these are the five branches okay in this diagram, we will see it. See, this is posterior cerebral artery. This is anterior cerebral artery. Anterior communicating artery, which is joining both the anterior cerebral arteries. Okay. These are two, these anterior two cerebral arteries are connected by anterior communicating artery. And these posterior cerebral arteries are connected with the internal carotid artery. This is internal carotid artery. This is posterior cerebral arteries are connected by posterior communicating artery. Okay. This is anterior choroidal artery. See here. This is anterior choroidal artery. This is ophthalmic artery here. Okay. So internal carotid artery and posterior cerebral arteries are connected by the posterior communicating artery. See, this is posterior communicating artery connects the internal carotid artery and the posterior cerebral artery. Okay. See, so this is posterior cerebral. Okay. Indicated. See internal carotid artery. This. This is posterior cerebral artery here one more internal carotid artery posterior cerebral artery internal carotid posterior cerebral posterior communicating artery okay so both the anterior cerebral arteries are connected by means of anterior communicating artery okay see this is these are anterior cerebral arteries so from this side these both are connected by anterior communicating artery. So this is circle of villus. Did you get it? See these two anastomoses form the circle of villus. See this posterior communicating artery between the internal carotid artery and the posterior cerebral artery, whereas anterior communicating and artery between the two anterior cerebral arteries. This form this complete is known as circle of villus. See this is circle of villus, main component of the blood supply of brain. Okay. See anterior cerebral arteries two 
anterior communicating artery which connects the two anterior cerebral arteries posterior cerebral arteries too see this is there are two posterior cerebral arteries posterior communicating arteries which connects them so middle cerebral artery cerebral artery is not involved in circle of willis as it is present more laterally so this it is present here this is middle cerebral artery so it is not involved inside this circuit so middle cerebral artery is not involved in circle of willis next applied anatomy of circle of willis so if there is aneurysm in the anterior communicating artery causes compression of the optic chiasma which causes bitemporal hemianopia okay what is aneurysm abnormal dilatation of anterior communicating artery so it dilates abnormally this causes compression to optic chiasma what is optic chiasma the two nasal fibers which carrying the temporal visual fields cross each other see from here on this side on this side cross each other this is known as optic chiasma so this is anterior communicating artery it is present just above the optic chiasma this is anterior communicating artery okay this anterior communicating this dilatation causes compression of optic chiasma this optic chiasma carries carries nasal fibers which carries a field from the temporal see temporal field this is temporal field this is temporal okay so which we which visual field is lost temporal visual field is lost so it causes by temporal hemianopia so this is left eye this is right eye so this is temporal field this is temporal field so this is by temporal hemianopia so the fibers lost are nasal fibers which are present at optic chiasma due to dilatation abnormal dilatation of the anterior communicating artery aneurysm of the posterior communicating artery causes compression of cranial nerve 3 that is oculomotor nerve oculomotor nerve okay these are the applied anatomy of the circle of willis quickly review the circle of willis completely so two vertebral arteries these are two vertebral arteries joined together to form basilar artery this is basilar artery the terminal branches of basilar arteries are posterior cerebral artery see this is posterior cerebral artery so what are the branches of vertebral artery these are posterior inferior cerebral artery okay these two form one trunk and form the anterior spinal artery and there is posterior spinal artery is also present whereas basilar artery gives rise to anterior inferior cerebral artery pontine branches so majority of the labyrinthine branches come from anterior inferior cerebellar artery okay it give, it also gives rise to superior cerebellar artery these three gives uh, supplies to blood supply to cerebellar cerebellum okay up to here it's clear now let's let us discuss this see this is internal carotid artery okay internal carotid artery and the posterior cerebral artery are connected by the this is they are connected by posterior communicating artery okay so this is ophthalmic artery of internal carotid artery this is ophthalmic artery this is anterior choroidal artery okay this is middle cerebral artery this does not involve in circle of willis it does not involve in circle of willis okay this is anterior cerebral artery this is also anterior cerebral artery so these two are connected by anterior communicating artery okay two anterior cerebral arteries are connected by anterior communicating artery its compression causes its dilatation sorry its dilatation causes compression of optic chiasmata chiasma which causes bitemporal hemianopia okay loss of temporal visual field remember this whereas compression of the posterior communicating artery causes dilatation of posterior communicating artery causes causes compression of oculomotor nerve these are applied aspects so this completely known as circle of willis thank you please do like subscribe and share